In what might be a first, the city of Louisville has agreed to not just pay a settlement to Breonna Taylor's family, but also enact a number of police reforms to try and prevent something like this from happening ever again. For instance, from now on, a commanding officer has to attach their name to a search warrant before it goes to a judge, which hopefully means that they'll be more careful about which raids they approve, because now they can be held accountable. Also, every raid will now include paramedics, so that if someone does get shot, somebody is on hand to try and save their life, unlike what happened with Breonna Taylor, who was left on the ground for 20 minutes after being shot. Another reform is that officers will now be incentivized to live in the communities that they police, which is a step in the right direction, but I'll be honest with you, I can't believe that police are allowed to live outside the areas that they patrol. You know, you would think they'd have a vested interest if they police the places that they're from. You know, it's like the president not living in the country that he's in charge of, which I know technically Putin does with America, but you know what I'm saying. And obviously, a large part of the settlement is the $12 million paid to Breonna Taylor's family, which is a record for the most money Louisville has ever paid for police misconduct. But honestly, that's not really the type of records we want black people to be setting. And the thing that's also messed up about these settlements is that it's never paid by the police who did something wrong. It's paid by the city, which means taxpayers are being punished for the crimes that are committed against them, which I think we can all agree is some bullshit. I mean, if cops are guilty of misconduct, they should be responsible for the settlement. You'd be a lot less likely to play fast and loose if you knew that you were risking your house. And as for the police department, this was a big step forward. But at the same time, guys, I don't think it should take the killing of an innocent person for police departments to make common sense reforms. They should be doing this on their own. You know, the time to install a smoke detector is not while your house is on fire. So yes, the city of Louisville has made moves to atone for what happened to Breonna Taylor. And in some ways, this is a victory. But really, the true victory will be when no more families have to get settlements for the loved ones that they've lost. All right, let's move on from police brutality to another scourge of 2020, Facebook, the place your uncle goes to investigate the Kennedy assassination. There's no denying that although Facebook publicly denounces hate speech and misinformation, it's also become a big part of their business, which is why today, hundreds of celebrities have teamed up to send a message to the Zuck. Kim Kardashian West and other celebrities say that they are freezing their Instagram accounts today to protest how its parent company, Facebook, has handled misinformation and hate speech. Kardashian West has 188 million Instagram followers. Other celebrities freezing their accounts for the day include Katy Perry, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Jennifer Lawrence. It's part of the Stop Hate for Profit campaign that has pressured Facebook to remove hate speech. Some have criticized the celebrity Instagram freeze as a stunt saying it's not much of a sacrifice. Okay, this is an interesting one. On the one hand, I agree with people who say it might not be a huge sacrifice to not post on social media for one day. I mean, for people who have spectrum, a day with no internet is just a part of their lives. But on the other hand, you have to admit all of these giant accounts freezing their posts on the same day creates a huge amount of attention to the problem of hate speech online and anything Anything that brings awareness to this issue, which is radicalizing young men, misinforming the public, and undermining democracy is a really good thing. Because guys, next to climate change and income inequality, online toxicity could become one of the things that rips our society apart. Right now, there are fake accounts that exist just to piss you off. Fake accounts that try and get black people and white people to hate each other people spreading conspiracies about vaccines, sex trafficking, and the Holocaust. And as we've seen in India and Myanmar, even Kenosha, Wisconsin, hate that started online can easily cross over into the real world. So look, maybe this one day boycott isn't the silver bullet, but at least it's a step in the right direction. And it's also good because maybe for a day, we can finally stop obsessing over stupid things like celebrities' butt pics and start focusing on important things like our friends' butt pics.